Welcome to Marketing Lab. Today we are going to discuss about email reputation management. Whenever we talk about any email marketing platform, we used to send our emails to certain domains with certain IPs. So it's really important to manage the reputation for those emails when we talk about deliverability because the deliverability of our email sometimes really uh, is dependent upon the reputation of our, e of our IP addresses and our domains. So there are multiple factors which are involved to make a good reputation for our domains and there are certain factors which directly or indirectly affect reputation. So we are going to discuss all this thing in the, in the videos and really and we'll discuss how to manage our database so that how to manage our system so that we can have a robust deliverability mechanism. Before going further we need to understand about email bounces and email bounce signifies any non-delivery of your email message when this happens the mailer will receive an automatic not notification of delivery failure this failure originates from recipient mail server from number of reasons so whenever you send any email it might be possible you would have observed that your you will get a bounce message that your email is unable to, re to reach the uh, or you reach your audience and you get certain email uh, get back to your inbox uh, stating some of the quotes or some imaginary language that you are unable to decipher what they have written all, all those things so that that is what email bounce is all about so the, there are a couple of ty types of bounces there are soft bounces and hard bounces there are reasons that your email might have got bounced maybe the mailbox of a recipient was full his servers was down and message was or message was too large for recipient inbox so these are these are the reasons which are which has caused your email to bounce back from the recipient mailbox but these reasons can be sorted out or uh, just for an example the mailbox might be full right now but pro probably after some time the recipient may clear up his email box and it will get cleaned up and you can again send send your email to that particular recipient his server might be temporarily down it can it can be in maintenance mode it can be again up and running and you can again retry or sending a message so these are the these sort of uh, these sort of bounces which can be rectified in a certain period of time are categorized as soft bounce. Now hard bounce, hard bounce is something which cannot be sorted out easily. That is something email even email addresses itself is invalid. No matter how many times you send to the, that you know, send message or that particular email address, it's not going to deliver, deliver because your email address itself invalid. If it doesn't even exist, the same case. How, uh, how far you can try it, it, it's not going to be a success in sending an email to that particular ID. Blockage of sender profile due to bad reputation. It's a very critical point that we'll discuss later. Uh, this happened when your sender profile is getting, is uh, got, got blocked by bad reputation. That's what we are here to discuss today. What are the factors uh, which, uh, which results in uh, setting, our, setting bad reputation to our domains or our sender profiles. When we have a soft bounces, our system usually retry again in 72 hours until message is getting again delivered. If the message continuously getting uh, failure, fa failure in deliverability, the system uh, tag that as a as a block or deferred list or a, uh, or a permanent hard bounce or NDR. So it's uh, it's not that any marketing system will will, will try only once to deliver the message. They will try after certain uh, certain time. So for example 72 hours or 48 hours within if that span of time the again deliverability fails then we have to take a decision whether we have to market as a hard bounce or we have to market as a, red, uh, as a com completely uh, invalid or junk email going further we need to understand what spam is all about because it this whole and this whole journey is related to spam the, in the uh, reputation of our center profile will directly or indirectly related to uh, to the spam emails that you will find in later uh, later slides so the whole journey of spam started from 1990s how to identify uh, identify the spam message that you usually got uh, you would have observed in your email box you get a lot of e emails but out of them most of them are usually the message that you are not intended to receive so those are called spams but your email back from uh, email box Normally, if you use Gmail, they have an inbuilt mechanism to identify those spams. So, on what basis they actually identify those, those spams? We are talking about that only. So, initially, back in 1990, the inbox primarily using Bayesian content, content filters. 
it's a very basic sort of filter where, where they only use the headers and content they have categorized some words and they have identified those as are irrelevant words and they have categorized them spam so the, at that point of time isps used to only filter out those uh, selected keywords and header contents and that's it but as the time grows the spammers become more smarter they found they found out ways to you know bluff these uh, uh, algorithms and we need to again revisit our algorithms to you know uh, uh, capture to grab this spam messages later on isp started using learned keywords most associated with spam like all cap uh, sorry the spam like free words like you would have received an email with saying free mobiles so free mobile is something like a catchy word but it can be used as spam or to is spam your email box or to or in to purpose to fish in your email uh, box or in your system like the you can have a email a subject line where uh, where everything is written in caps in capital letters so these sort of identifiers later isp started using it to finding out what are the spam messages later 2000 they have become more smarter both have become more smarter spammers have also become so smarter and we have also improvised in certain our algorithms we have used starting permission based email marketing and we have we have pursued a better way to identify spam there we we actually try to profile the profile spammers and non spammers based on their their behavior they are sending messages so what we actually started doing is we have analyzed different sort of messages coming out of spammers we have profiled them what are the what are the typical behaviors what are the typical keywords what are the typical sending times and what are the ways to they use the marketing platform they use the sender profiles they use so we have we have captured all this information and we have profiled them based on all these things uh, by analysis and then we have uh, inbuilt them into algorithm and categorized them as a, as a spammers so these are the basic some of the practices that normally happens which actually make your sender reputation score so based on all these things uh, it will uh, it will ultimately lead to a sender reputation score when you talk about this score it's it's a score which has been given to your sender profile let's suppose you are sending out email from your from uh, let's suppose headlightmarketinglab.com so my marketing lab would be domain would be my domain and that particular domain will will be assigned a score, sender reputation score it will be depend it will dependent upon many factors uh, that we will discuss uh, so so it's almost impossible to find out exact algorithm yes exactly because there is so much improvisation and there are lot many isps there are lot many domain owners each and every domain user owners can isp have their own algorithm so it's actually become very tough to how to how to make a sender reputation score how to uh, basically uh, know uh, where we actually stands because some of the times uh, normally domain owners use third party services as well the, that provide the algorithms and you know score the reputation score the sender profiles of coming uh, senders so it's actually very tough to identify what is the score but yes at least we can have our certain guidelines we can uh, take few of the points that are most important so that we can have a better reputation like sending history new sender unexpected spike on volume the uh, perfect example let's suppose you are having a one sender which is coming in your in your email box quite regularly but all of a sudden in the month of may or june you see a spike in its volume and there are a lot of emails coming from that particular sender profile so they so do you, uh, you you know that there is something fishy going on over there so you need to analyze all those uh, pick points that you can identify those pick points so that uh, you can actually identify what spammers are all about user based spam and non spam uh, spam complaints in gmail you would have seen when you receive an email it gives you facility to categorize the spam or non spam so it's a it's a very basic idea to cut to filtering out spammers from your from uh, filtering out spam from your email box when user itself is saying that he is not any interested anymore in these sort of emails and they can be categorized as a spammers so these sort of algorithm that uh, that uh, mainly used by gmail or hotmail or yahoo where they are asking explicitly from the from the user itself mailing infrastructure without authentication like spf and dkim spf and dkim is a, is a very readily usable algorithms systems which has been implemented by most of the marketing platform or domain owners to authenticate their sender profiles so that the recipient can identify that email is coming from authenticated source and they, then they can allow to plan it upon their 
email box we will have further videos on this spf and dkim because it's a pretty vast topic we cannot you know cover in this small video we will discuss it later but in nutshell we you can say it's a it's a it's a sort some small sort of a code that's been implemented on a html code uh, body of your email or on a dns server of your sending profile that code goes through your email here uh, lands up in your uh, lands up to the uh, isp service provider they checks the code they authenticate the credibility of source and then they allow to land up to the recipient's email box this is a very uh, nutshell summary of spf and dkim spam traps so you need to take care of spam traps so what are the steps to be taken for better score better score first of all we need to find out what are the sender profiles that are going to spam us how to identify that it's a it's a very practical and very important concept that you need to understand let's start over that so what what happens is let's suppose i am a domain owner and i want to uh, i want to capture the spammers that that's, uh, that can attack my websites or that can attack my email box so i'll set up a tra spam trap uh, how how it works let's see what happens is you would have normally seen on many uh, on many websites the email addresses like salesyourdomain.com, hello at the red marketing lab.com. So these are the spam traps. We call it a spam trap because it's an email box where the um, that can be easily used to you know uh, by used by spammers to sending out uh, unwanted emails to our uh, websites. So what happens is as a domain owner, I'll set it up on my website these sort of email box that are the, uh, these. The, uh, these particular email boxes are called spam traps and honey pots. Now, what happens is spammer. What will do is they they will spread their bots onto different websites, and they try to capture all these sort of email uh, email addresses in their repository, so that they can later on use uh, all these email box to spam your email box. Like like this, they they have collected the uh, email addresses from websites. Now they have uh, made the unwanted emails and then they are bombing out uh, with the emails to your uh, websites. Now what spammer will do? Spammer will identify these sort of uh, these sort of spammers because he has intentionally placed this particular email uh, email IDs on on website so that the spammers uh, you will use their bots and use the email address to bomb uh, the unwanted emails. So these particular email boxes are made for this particular purpose only to trap all these sort of, sort of spammers. So then what, will, what they will do is automatically they will identify these are the spawn, these are the emails which is coming to my particular email box, and just say and just uh, uh, these are these are repeated these are, these are unwanted emails I I have, and they will immediately block those spammers. So this is the this is a very uh, basic structure of how uh, honey traps, spam traps, and bot and spammers and all how how they function. So our basic idea is that don't let these uh, these these uh, the you know uh, the email addresses, the domains like uh, abuse, the postmaster security, at, uh, security at the red Asia at the red, like these sort of uh, uh, emails to enter in your email box because these are the only uh, domains which is you getting used by spammers. And if you if you can block them to be in your database by uh, by some filtering or by making your uh, list or by coding, you can easily help them crubbing and entering into your database and if they will not enter into your database as a, as a lead you will also not sending out uh, emails to those leads and ultimately your reputation will not hamper personal email email domains as you know inter, uh, nowadays gmail priority inbox is now used by 93 percent of gmail users the algorithm for this uh, gmail priority inbox is that let's suppose if any email landed up in your gmail uh, inbox you have shown interest in that, you have uh, shown an activity on that email. Gmail will automatically categorize that uh, sender as a priority. So, and if in uh, future the email will once again come from that particular sender profile, they will automatically come into a priority list and rest of the emails which you have not shown as a, a, any a, a activity, they will be categorized as not non-priority list and that will be out of your priority email box. So if 93% of Gmail users are using using that, it's very unlikely to 
to reach your business email to any person any uh, any uh, personal email address of any recipients so in a way uh, in a way personal email ids are not that much recommendable to be in your lead database if you are working on b2b uh, business as, as you can see average inbox delivery rate is 78 to 89 percent if your ip address domain holds 91 to 100 score if in case due to this reason your delivery will delivery rate is going lower than 86 percent that you then you may consider you removing your personal email addresses out of your lead database i am not saying that you should temporarily remove temporarily uh, permanently remove from database you can temporarily hold them for your uh, for your marketing campaign and later on at the time when you feel that situation has recently changed you can again retry to sending them competitor email address you should always keep your email competitor email address out of database because that was, it might be possible they have already blocked your ip address and sent and sent profiles so even if you send them emails it is ultimately going to be bounced and ultimately your email reputation will uh, mark and uh, system reputation will get hampered there is provision of of whitelisting certain uh, ip addresses and sender profiles so you can easily use them like suppose you uh, you have a domain uh, and you have a, a marketing you have promotional campaign as well as a transactional uh, emails going out so it might happen your promotional email marketing has gone for a toss and there is some mishapping happen and your reputation gone down and your hard bounce really increased due to your due to blockage of your email addresses but in that case if your transaction emails also started uh, also started getting bounce it may be problem for your business so it's always better to have a different set of ip addresses or domain for transaction and promotional activities in that way you can easily uh, easily curb the situation because if in case your your transactional ip has got a problem you need to address that immediately but your promotion campaign can take some time time you can take some rest to you know uh, take care of it so it's really recommendable to have a two different set of a sending domains one for transactional and one for promotional so that if uh, one of the promotional domain go on toss at least your transactional emails are going uh, safe and your business is done not getting hampered these are some of the steps you should take for a better score SPF and DKIM are set of integration stage it usually happens at the integration stage itself you set up uh, some some code some uh, authenticated code on your email body or your uh, DNS system it uh, say it got captured it got uh, decrypted decrypted by ISPs then they authenticate it's coming from the legitimate source and they allow your email to end up in an email, email box migrate to suppression list properly we have already discussed that you should always keep your good email leads separate from the the unwanted leads avoid common spam words like i have not mentioned here i i, I think i have forgot about it so spam words like free freebies like hurry discount offer offers like in everything is in capital letters are, are sort of spam words that normally isp uh, isp uh, inter internet service providers used to you know uh, uh, capture the spammers so these are uh, those sort of spam words should not be ideally be in your email box subject line should avoid non alpha characters and all caps image is a very important part of an uh, in email you should have a limited image in email what happens is what usually happens is sometime it uh, sometime image images are blocked by uh, by isps so if you have your email would have a large amount of uh, images ultimately your email will not uh, will, will not reach to uh, into the email box because images are get, uh, images are already being blocked due to due to size or they do not even want to you know uh, down, get down your, your images got download so it's a it's a good practice if you have a limited sort of image in your in your email box maybe a 40 60 ratio will do means 40 percent images and 60 percent of text will do if you have images you should always have all text and descriptive text so let's suppose your email your images don't have not got downloaded but at least the text behind those images can be inferred by a reader the intended purpose can can be transferred to the audience no hidden fonts like white gray and red avoid too many font changes or large fonts fonts 
manage your database to clean out hard bounce multiple bounce and spam traps so the whole idea behind is that when you talk about databases you should regularly keep on monitoring your database and and have a mechanism to check what are the email which are getting bounced on regular uh, regularly so you need to keep them filtered out of your lead database so you so that your list remains clean and ultimately when you your list will clean you will have a better deliverability ratio and you will you will have a, a good email and deliverability uh, reputation email center profile reputation so these are the basic steps that you can you know implement in your in your campaigns to get your to keep your uh, survey uh, to keep your center profile uh, center reputation score better here are some of the codes that you can see over here like uh, for hard and soft bounces the one which are reflected in red are normally soft bounces like 4 to 1 these are the so, uh, so uh, codes when you receive an email back that your email has been bounced this code will be out there so you can identify if the code is 421 it might be possible the system is uh, not uh, active the uh, receiving computer is shut off like 450 will uh, will say the mailbox problem uh, 451 will say local error to recipient so the the four series are series of soft bounces that that means the, you, if you can retry in again in 48 hours or 72 hours it might be a high possibility that it will be delivered when very late uh, move on later on with the 500 uh, series codes these are the codes which are hard so just uh, try to observe them like 500 when are when one of the uh, one or both server did something wrong basically we are sending incorrect unrecognizable command for isp to it i to identify so basically I, isp will not be able to know what has to be done with this message because ultimately when this whole uh, journey is from sending signals from one particular uh, uh, one particular the point to another point so until and unless the commands and parameters passed on to those, uh, those commands are not clear the target uh, recipient will not be able to encrypt your signal and ultimately your message will not reach so any questions and comments i would again request you to subscribe to marketing lab any questions and comment you want to wish to ask please uh, send it over on my video and thank you very much and have a great day we'll come up with a more videos later